Battletech is a Kickstarter game by Harebrain Schemes that is currently available on Steam for $39.99. It was successfully kickstarted, by the way. Uh, this game was given to me by Ernest, who does not work for Harebrain Schemes. Uh, he's actually just on some of my friends list. Thank you so much, uh, Ernest, or uh, Color of Blood Fury. I'm actually not sure which name you want me to use, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, this video is going to be long. I think it's going to be long. And uh, the reason it's going to be long is because the game is a uh, very slow. Uh, it's, it's a very slow paced game with lots of dead space, lots of dead air. Uh, I'll try my best to eliminate certain pauses here and there, but you need to actually experience the game in its entirety with no edits because you need to know basically what you're into. Now, to note, uh, I have this game currently installed on an M.2. Uh, and that's very important to know as you see things load, it's on basically the fastest possible drive available. But I say basically, meaning not literally, please go easy on me. All right. The, so first off, we are in the new character creation here, uh, and it has a bit of like a Mass Effect or Bioware style, like kind of introduction. You tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, where did you come from? Which one of these factions or houses are, did you, do, you, do you hail from? Uh, there's a little bit of a, of a breakdown of all this stuff. And this is basically where you go to create your own individual story. And it tells you a little bit of everything. So you go through and you select things. We're just going to set some random things, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, and then you have your actual character creator here, which actually I thought this was pretty neat. If you go in here, uh, look at uh, Customize. Uh, and we go through and uh, like there's a random button. Oh, there's no random button. Huh? I thought there was. Uh, you can actually go through and change the makeup, which is uh, it's, it's just a little a little light for some of them, but others are actually pretty dramatic. Uh, tattoo, you get a face tattoos. You could change the clothing. There's a number of different things you could change here. You could change the lighting, which I thought was kind of neat, neat right here. Look at this. Bam. Uh, a couple other things here to see. Go to, there's like a red one here. Probably this one. Uh, then you can change the camera. I actually like this one a lot, being able to actually go and change the angle of the camera. So the, all of this stuff basically just goes into just simply uh, your. <laughs> this just goes into sorry. This it's it's not so much that you know the mustache on somebody that I would assume was a was a female. Uh, it's it's that it's that mustache on her. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the complexion. You know, there's all kinds of stuff you could do. Um, let's see. We go back to and actually this this should let me go back. Uh, just see, kind of go hair roots, hair roots, lips, skin, eyes. Uh, let's see, da, 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 da. let's go back and take a look at, see, discard changes, yes, sure. Uh, you actually have a number of different things you could go through and pick here. You have pronouns, you have he, she, and, uh, they. Uh, you go through here and you select your character if you want, da, 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 da. it's got a little bit of everything. Uh, and then you click next and that's where you go into the confirmation phase. Now, something to note, this is something I ran across, I didn't realize, uh, your mech warrior call sign, AKA, that's what they're going to call you in the game. Right. That's what uh, people who you are, your uh, who who you contract out with, they're going to call you by that. So I put A.K.A. Mike B. Now, a couple things to note. If you put a if anything you put in caps, it's all cap sensitive. Right. So they're going to if your first name is Mike, they're going to yell at you, Mike, every single time. They're not going to they're not going to correct it for you. <laughs> so oops, uh, they're not going to correct it for you uh, by making it, you know, Mike. Right. So you met you have to do that yourself. Uh, only your shipmates will pretty much call you uh, by your first name. Uh, and certain people will sometimes call you commander, whatever. So usually commander uh, and then what I have B. So they call, call me commander B. You can put commander whatever you want. Uh, so keep that a note when you make your character. I don't think there's a way to actually make it uh, to change it later. So keep that in mind. Now, going back here. We're going to jump into the campaign where I left off and I'm, I'm going to avoid all story, story spoilers here, but I'm going to touch a little bit on the uh, how it delivers some of the story and get kind of like the framework of the story itself. I do have some comments on that. So it's loading the save file now. Again, reminders M.2. So it's going to be uh, very, very quick compared to if you put it on like a hard, like a regular hard disk, which I had initially uh, when I first started playing it, uh, it is painfully long. It is quite long. Uh, M.2 pretty it's, it's pretty sufficient, I think. Um, let's see. Here we go. So now we're on. This is the ship. This is basically your your admin section. Essentially, you could go through and you can kit out certain things. You could you could progress the time by weeks and days. And you want to do that sometimes because, like for example, I have a character that's currently out of out of commission because uh, they were injured. Uh, on one of the missions and they won't be available for 53 days. I have a financial report coming up in 22 days. The financial report will actually go through and tell me. Can I pull up the old one? Oh, I guess I can. Well, that's really a bummer. Huh. Um, but you could. No, I guess not. Uh, so the financial report will uh, basically break down for you the um, all of your expenses. It's it's essentially like a PL, uh, a budget sheet, 
and my current rate of uh my current rate is like 250,000 credits uh per month and i have just enough funds to last me probably another two months uh, on top of it, right? The 257,000, right? Uh, morale is at uh, mid range. The morale is basically just determined certain things that happen with on the ship uh, and also um, your character's, your, the mech warrior's performance on the ground itself. Uh, medical me me mech tech, hold on a second. Let's go ahead and go to the hiring hall here. You can see the hiring hall is where you go and actually pick up some more characters. Uh, you go to the store store and this is where you can go and buy gear you could buy parts of mechs you could buy uh, uh weapons uh equipment which is gonna be like your heat sinks and jump jets and all that stuff um you go to command center here we go to contracts this is where you actually go and you pick out which mission you want to do uh let's see uh looking at this just kind of quickly break this down the number of skulls indicates the difficulty of the mission we're gonna do this one uh as part of this particular uh indie for breakfast here uh and but just to note this right here means that they pay your way to the uh they pay for basically your 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 flight out to the uh to the mission itself so take that into consideration whenever you go and you get a mission now once you actually get a mission you can go through and negotiate right once you select one in this case uh basically you gotta go and it's a battle lowlands so lowlands has its own individual uh traits like if you're in a desert that makes it harder for you to uh manage your heat um and if you're in an atmosphere i think it just slows down the heat something i don't know anyways uh lowlands the lowlands biome features rolling hills and gentle slopes as well as thick woodlands that provide cover areas of marshland offer increased stability uh so yes uh any kind of liquid like standing liquid like water pond uh maybe even this marshland is once we get inside of it if you stand inside of it it actually helps cool down your uh your mechs so you could use more of your weapons at once um let's see battle battle is uh, basically just a straight up battle i actually haven't seen anything other than battle capture base here we go this is new capture base this one is your objective is to enter the target facility clear any enemy presence and occupy the facility for a number of rounds okay cool that's pretty straightforward awesome now we're not going to go up here and do this one because again that's that is a uh a, a main storyline campaign uh, thing i don't want to spoil anything for you guys so uh here's where you go actually go to, to negotiate we go to negotiate you could try this thing all the way to the right and you can, yeah i want 414,700 credits or i get half of that or i could get a fraction of that now why would you want to do why would you want to do this negotiation because whenever you finish a match you could go uh, and get you get salvage so salvage could be basically weapons or pieces of mech or whatever and you have a fraction here now what this represents is basically uh two in this case is two guaranteed pieces that you can pick from the pile yourself or 10 uh or and sorry and 10 random pieces from the pile so you might get a, a pile of like 30 pieces of things that you could go through you could sift through and you could pick two that you get to keep and then 10 will just randomly be assigned to you or and but you get the least amount of money so it's basically guaranteed gear but it's random gear so you're not exactly sure exactly what you're going to get right so push all the way here and you get zero pick of the litter and two random so that's a pretty big deal there are going to be situations where you're going to need gear more than money in my case i need money more than gear so that's what we're going to go we're going to accept this bam so this is where you go through and you actually uh drop in and manage which one of your mechs is going to be going to this uh, uh to this battle now we're actually not gonna jump on this just yet um i guess we're actually already at this, at this location that's good uh, you drag and drop all of your characters over so i'm gonna take medusa medusa is gonna be right here um and each one of these each, each of these is basically your, your all your different uh mechs that you could you could go and use for this for this particular mission this this one is actually has nothing on it so we're not going to use that at all uh the spider we're gonna we'll take that i feel like it might still be kind of underweight for all this stuff uh this thing is jacked uh and i would repair it i would repair the repair this but it's gonna take some time and i'll show you what i mean let's see so first off let's see there's darius uh, in the barracks, we have, okay, another, so mech bay, mech bay is you talk to, uh, Yang, I think his name's Yang, uh, and navigation is where you talk to this young lady here, and captain's quarters, obviously, this is your, uh, your quarters, uh, specifically, um, and then you also have a, a, a tertiary character that, that comes in, that kind of works with you here and there, and then, of course, you have your contacts through contracts that you work with, uh, as well, Woo! all right, so, uh, going to the mech bay, this is pretty, pretty important, uh, we go to the mech bay here and you can see that you can uh go and double say click on this and go refit so this is the one that got jacked right so we're gonna go say replace and replace this is because i lost the a chunk of left torso i lost my left arm so i gotta replace it this thing is broken i need to repair it uh this is broken i need to repair it repair you basically go through and just repair everything uh or just click repair all and it does it for you uh you can see that i have 50 out of 60 tons i have 10 tons remaining why do i have 10 tons remaining well look i have all these components down here jump jets heat sinks uh long-range missiles and all of these components are broken 
they're gone, they're destroyed. So I have to replace that with new ones. So LRM ammo, sure, I'll drag that over here, left torso. Uh, LRM 10, what was it before? It was, oh, actually, uh, longer than 10. Okay, cool, we'll drop that over here too. Actually, if that's gonna be... Don't necessarily want to put uh, ammo, ammo boxes. You have, first of all, you have to have them, right? You have to have them in order to supply your weapon with whatever ammo that is, unless it's a laser, in which case it just kind of generates ammo on its own. Uh, in, in exchange, it gives you plenty of heat uh, increase <laughs> on your uh, on your mech, so you got to be careful with that. Uh, a lot of these things actually generate heat. I think in uh, so what I gather from chat, because I streamed this already for two days. What I gather from chat, there's a number of people that I have that are in chat who have played BattleTech itself a number of times. There's also a lot of people who somehow are uh, magically an expert at this game, even within hours of it releasing. But that's fine. That's just me being a streamer and bitching about stuff. Uh, the the thing that you want to keep in mind is. Um, even though I guess in the BattleTech board game, RPG board game, uh, your long range missiles and such do not generate heat, which this could be incorrect information. Again, I got some chat. Um, it does generate heat here in uh, in the BattleTech uh, video game. All right, so LRM 10, good, good, good. We're still at 56 out of 60 tons. It's like, oh, where that? Where could that way be? What else am I saying? <laughs> See more heat sinks and more jump jets. Uh, instead of throwing jump jets on, I'm actually gonna go equipment here and just throw some more heat sinks on it. Uh, heat sinks are invaluable, especially if you plan on just going ham on some people. You want to have these heat sinks down. So I have two more tons remaining. Now, this uses a basic hardpoint system that you've seen in a lot of, uh, especially a lot of space uh, sci-fi games where you have uh, either a mech or a spaceship or some kind of frigate or something like that, where you're basically taking items that you purchase from whatever you acquire through missions, and then you're you're mounting them to your your ship. You have mount points. So let's say, for example, this Helion M laser, right? Medium laser. This one has a slot, a slot of one. So I need to find a, something that has a slot of one. Here we go, right here. That has a slot of one. This can hold, this left arm can hold one laser weapon on it. And that's it. There's nothing else it can hold. You notice there's nothing, nothing, nothing. Just that. So that is basically made for that. I mean, it can hold ammo. There's no slot. There's no hard point for mounting ammo. Uh, so I got basically ammo pretty much anywhere I want. Uh, let's see. So I got a laser on it. That piece is 59 tons. I actually still have a little bit of room. I could take and put another laser somewhere. Nope. All my slots are taken up. Let's take a look around and see. Nothing here. Uh, 101. Uh, nothing else. Actually, there is nothing else I could throw on anything because I don't have any any open slots. I could throw more uh, more equipment on if I want. Remember, I lost two jump jets and I'm not replacing them. This guy's not jumping, uh, except we'll do that right there. Uh, this guy's not jumping uh, as I guess as often or as far or as whatever uh, as he was before. So what I'll do is I'll actually tell it to uh, max out the armor for it. You can go through and max out individual. I can go do 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 do. See the tonnage going and increasing there. You could do that if you want to, but I'm just gonna go max all. Just let it, just let it handle it for for me. Uh, it looks like I actually took some off the legs. No, that's awesome. If you lose a leg, you can't sprint. Your character will still walk around. It doesn't necessarily lose the leg. There's no visual showing that you actually lost a leg. It'll just kind of like take a long time to walk around. Now confirm. This is where it starts to get painful. <laughs> it's gonna take 43 days <laughs> to actually manage uh, to 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 repair this thing. I mean, this thing got jacked. But so it's gonna take 43 days to fix. Fine. All right. So uh, navigation. This is basically a star map and all this stuff. I haven't even looked at this thing, this thing like once, to be honest. But yeah, actually, this is my first time looking at it, and I've got like six or seven hours into the game, maybe even more. Uh, so we're actually gonna ignore it for now, because clearly, if I haven't looked at it once, and it's not even that important. But they need to put Smire somewhere. Here she is. Look at that. All right. Captain's quarters. Reputation. Customized company. Maybe over here, I can go through and actually change a couple things from the company. Let's see. Oh, I could change my my thing. I could change my my name here and change colors and change my symbol to whatever I want. Da, 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 and it goes say. All right, cool. There you go. There it is. All right. So let's go ahead and get into uh, that contract here. Let's see. I'm not talking to any characters too because I know one of them's gonna blurt out some kind of plot point that's gonna ruin something for somebody, and I don't want to do that. Let's go to negotiation, and we're gonna say lots of money and go accept. And we're already here, so let's go ahead and drop the spider. I'm not a fan of the spider, but the the uh, the locust is not in good shape because it doesn't have anything mounted to it currently. Actually, I think that's all it, all it could be mounted on it because there's really not a whole lot that it could carry because it's a 20 ton max uh, 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 mech. Drop this in here, boop. There you go, and he's ready to deploy. Now each oh, whoops, there actually is one more thing. I'm sorry, there is one more thing. Uh, when you go to the barracks, you can actually go to Mech Warriors here, and then you can go through and. And you have a uh, a skill tree. Whoops, I don't know. I don't know what's on the other page. I think it's probably just like basic, sh like you know, uh, stats. But just in case it says so and so was working with so and so, that is an important plot point. Blah blah blah. All right. So uh, right here you have a uh, 900 XP. I can spend it on upgrading my tactics here. 
And if I click on this, uh, it'll say minus one indirect fire penalty. Let's reset that. Uh, I click on guts and it says plus one health. Then over here, gunnery, 10% base weapon hit. That's actually really good. We're going to take that. Uh, and then, of course, the, the larger points just basically cost more uh, to, to upgrade into. Decker. Decker is actually, I like this guy. He's been, he's been pretty good to me. Uh, he has 1,200 XP to spend. Uh, how about, yeah, let's go ahead and actually throw this up. Plus, it says plus 10%. Hold on a second. Plus 7.5%. Oh, it only increases by uh, by 2.5%. Son of a... All right, well, fine. We're just going to leave it alone then. All right. Uh, gun, actually, this guy I can add. Uh, let's see. This is actually a multi-target. This is good, just in case you need to split up your uh, your rolls here. Oh, actually, I actually already have it. Yay, I forgot I already had it. Let's see. Let's go ahead and add... It's super expensive. Let's go ahead and get it. 15% base. There we go. AKA. That's the dude that I made. And these are all just other people. Good to go. There you go. All right. Good to go. All right. Now we're going to get into the actual action itself. And we'll talk. You need to take off my shoes. I need to take off my shoes. What are you doing? All right. So, yes. Lots of money. Finalize a contract. Deploy. Throw the spider down there. Throw Medusa over here. And let's uh, go. All right. So, I will, I will preface with this. This game is hard. Uh, it is unforgivingly hard. Uh, it, you can save often. So don't feel like it's like super difficult in the in, in regards to you have to start over every time something happens. No, no, you, uh, you can save as often as you want, but every save automatically overrides, overwrites the last one. So you might want to just save like before a battle and then because some missions have multiple battles uh, and then progress from there and slowly after every other encounter uh, uh you know increase or, or save again all right so enemies detected good this is good actually all right so it's my turn water reduces movement speed so it tells you when you hover over it right this is actually really good for for this video actually uh so uh yeah it, it basically it, it it increases the unit's heat sinking ability by 50 percent and also reduces movement speed the forest will provide cover 25 percent damage reduction against against range attacks to the front or the side uh does not attack with guarded uh very very you, you have to remember that it will only give you increased damage reduction from the front and side so if somebody's behind you it's as if you're standing out in the open it does not matter that you're in some trees i feel like that's kind of weird honestly because the purpose of the trees is to provide some kind of uh concealment and camouflage but whatever <laughs> you have the ability uh, as the as the camera operator to move around very freely now i have some uh, i've actually already gone through and made some changes to the keybinds because the initial keybinds was very very awkward and very very strange it was like r and f were like to go up and down i was just like that is really strange uh, but you use waz to move around you can use the mouse to look up and down and you can zoom in with the mouse wheel i'd recommend cranking that up quite a bit because otherwise you can sit there like scrolling for days just to zoom in and out now uh you have a couple of abilities down here at the bottom you have your basic attack you have your move sprint uh if you sprint you're not going to be able to uh attack or do anything after his basic use of water action points or whatever they call it um you have the ability to jump uh evasive movement which is a passive ability that she's right there unit generates an extra evasive charge from movement actions and this is like super important because even if even if you are um Let's pretend. Let's actually go and move these guys forward here. Get this, get this thing going because it's going to be a long one. Let's go and move this guy all the way. Is this going to do it in the what? Yeah, it's fine. Just get him up there. There you go. Um, even though uh, the... Whoop, oh, okay. We, we, we've, saw, we, we've seen somebody. You could turn off this, this automatic uh, 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 system of aiming or the camera moving over there. Actually, there's a ton of different camera things you could change. Right now, I have it pretty minimal. But if I had it maxed out, it's insane. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now because we have to look at everything here today because there's a lot of stuff. Let's see. Let's go sprint follow cam, normal move cam, boom, enemy cinematics, always, attack zoom, always. Actually, like attack zoom, I'll probably leave that up. So there you go. Everything's on always. Okay. Zoom to new content, auto select new, okay, good. Save. Then we go back. Now, watch. I'm just going to move. Let's say we've this character here and we're going to tell her to move or actually sprint like right over here into this forest. Right there, there we go. Copy that. Oh, it didn't. <laughs> of course it doesn't. I only told it to. Did it really ignore me? Did I not hit a, did I not save that? Give me a break. Let's see. Uh always, always. Enemy said it's targeting shoulder camera. Sprint follow cam. Normal move follow cam. Always. Well, that's odd. Use the dynamic camera. I guess it just didn't want to do it. That's cool. <laughs> Weird. 
All right, keep moving these guys forward here. Ah, there it is. That's what I'm talking about. So I guess it's not always. Always doesn't mean always. Just like literally doesn't mean literally, literally anymore. All right, uh, let's see. You can see that we're the, we the, yeah, my turn now. So let's see. Let's go ahead up here, upper left corner. Just basically tells you this is your destroy enemy units. You click on them and take you to it right there. Destroy enemy reinforcements. Great. That should give me the location of the enemy re reinforcements uh, before I even encounter them. That's pretty awesome. Good. I can plan ahead. <laughs> all right over here at the bottom too we have morale you can spend morale you gain morale as you play uh, actually tells you right there when above 50 percent your mech warriors will all have slightly increased combat prowess uh special abilities like precision strike and vigilance must spend morale to activate so precision, precision strike is just basically like you're playing uh old mech warrior where you can target uh an individual piece of uh, and I use Old Mech Warrior as an example because like Mech Warrior Mercenaries too, because that's the last Mech Warrior game that I played and I loved it to death. Uh, everything after that has pretty much sucked. <laughs> or actually, no, I just never, I just haven't played much after that. Um, but yeah, you have the ability to basically target individual things. And so what Precision Strike does is it pulls up a UI that allows you to actually go through and target those individual pieces or whatever you want. Kind of nice, actually. Right here, let's look at this arc right here. You see this arc? This arc it actually tells you where your weapons are the most effective. The, the brighter the color or the brighter the white, the more effective it is. So uh, you say I have two medium lasers. That's basically the medium range, right? Let's go ahead and move this guy over here. Copy that. Now we're following. Now we're following. By the way, heaven forbid there's like one guy left on the field when we're done with this because he will, you will spend 10 or 20 minutes just chasing around the map. It's really fucking stupid. I'm not going to lie. It's super dumb. There's so much fat in the gameplay that it's, 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 it pains me. It pains me. It really, really does. Here we go. This guy here, PPC, medium laser, a uh, short laser, and a long range missile. You can see pretty much everything. It's got some some decent amount of gray on it. So we're gonna keep moving forward here. Um, yeah, like you notice, we're watching the character move, watching the character move, watching the character move. Right? It's it's imagine doing that five times if you have four of your mechs up in your lance. You already have five people that you have to move around chasing some asshole around. You might get a shot up, you might not, uh, just because he's constantly running around the map, but it's completely ridiculous and asinine because of all the fat that's in the game. So, and every other thing you do, yes, Commander. every other thing you do in the game, uh, there's like a pause after oh, after certain actions, which is really, really strange. It actually makes me feel like I'm the one that's slowing things down. Like, did I have to did I hit a button or whatever? So like he stopped and then he paused. There's like a one to one and a half second pause after pretty much every other ability used. And you might see it here. You should see it actually here probably a number of times because there's a number of different things you're going to be doing throughout this thing. Uh, all the different attacks and all the different uh, encounters. And, and I'll be honest, we're probably going to lose this, which is totally fine. Because uh, the point of this is to basically show you everything you can do. Not to win. That's my excuse. All right. All right. So we can move this guy over here, but you can see there's a red line. That red line basically says, hey, that, that guy, those guys you could target. All right. Uh, also means those guys can target you. So over here, you can see this is, a, this, is a, this is a thing in the way. You can't, you don't want to necessarily park it right here because you might lose certain visibility or certain weapons may not work or whatever between you and that guy. I think that's what that means. Um, there's a lot of things that they actually neglected to explain. And I actually had to rely on chat to kind of catch me up on things, which I totally appreciate. So thank you very much if you were in chat and you were hooking me up. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and actually take this guy in the Medusa. Oops, okay. Now he can't rotate that far because he's reached the end of his line basically. He's spent all of his all of his action points walking to that point, so he can't actually turn to the right all the way. So what I have to do is escape for that, uh, hit three again. Oops, hit three again. Uh, click on like right here maybe, and then I can rotate it all the way. Yeah, there we go. All right, so walk this guy over there. Let him do his thing. Here we go. Here's the reinforcements. I didn't realize they are coming right now. Damn. That guy's moving. Yep. I gave this guy my back, my side. My internals are taking a beating. By the way, don't be surprised if you get like one shot by something that's that even if you're facing them. Like the game has such horrendous RNG. I mean, it's percentage based, but I swear to God, you lose more than you win if it's 50-50. It's freaking, it's, ah, it's infuriating. People call this actually being XCOM, which is a term that I'm not necessarily familiar with because I did not play that much XCOM at all. Basically none. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess that is a thing. So let's go ahead and actually take, let's go, no, we're going to attack, attack, and then we tab. I got to tab again to go to this guy. We're going to fire on this guy who's firing on my friend. You can see over the bottom right corner, I have different weapons. I have a PPC, which is apparently really good. Everyone says it's really good. And actually, everything I've done with it so far has been pretty impressive. Uh, medium laser, short laser, unfortunately, is out of range. of my short lasers I can't use that. And long range missiles. So all these things have a percentage of hit that it can, uh, the percentage that it can hit. Um, and I could go through 
Oops, oh, sorry. Well, now that I've set, select, I selected. Okay, so this is another like weird quirk, right? I selected that target with attack, and then I select pre precision strike, which is an attack move, and it brought me back out to this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this again. There we go. Now we're back to where we were. So here we can go up there and select which item, which part of the mech we want to shoot. Uh, up here at the top, you can see that there is a uh, a number of a number of different pieces that you can hover over, and it will tell you what is on that arm, which is awesome. You want that. You really, really want that. Because then you could say, okay, I'm going to target wherever the ammo is, like this right here. So this is the left torso. Left torso. And then laser, laser, laser. Good, good, good. And then let's see if we can do any kind of damage to this guy. Target confirmed. With a bunch of good stuff here. Miss. Uh, oh, few good hits. Few good hits. Took out a leg instead, though. <laughs> so when you aim at the thing, and this seems to be something that was, uh, I, I guess somebody found a link that actually explained this more specifically, which I'm glad I, I'm glad that I streamed this before doing any kind of coverage on it because there's so much to learn, so much that you have to understand in the game that is just not explained that well, that it's just, uh, that it's, it's completely overwhelming at first. And if it wasn't for chat, I would be... I, I, I would probably just not have time. I'd probably just set it aside and be like, you know what? I don't have time to learn 1500 systems to play a game that I might not like. Uh, and turns out it's a game that I don't like anyways. <laughs> so good, save me some time. Thank you so much. All right, let's go ahead and move this guy over here. We're gonna give him a good arc right here. This is basically your arc of, uh, that doesn't count as your backside or your side, right? The areas that you could protect essentially. Then we're gonna go ahead and go and attack this guy as well with a medium laser AC2. So I have four things firing at him right now with a 70, 70, 85 with an average of 77%. Couple of misses. Looks like it was like what half of them missed. Enemy of course. But good, we did so we did a good amount of damage to this guy. Lots of weird pauses. The pause. Thank you. Give it back. Order. All right, so let's go ahead and go move this guy just so he's within range to do some damage over there. Good. And he's got a ton of stuff. As a matter of fact, he doesn't have anything that will necessarily reach there. This guy is all... Decker is, uh, the Centurion is basically decked out. I, I've decked it out in nothing but a bunch of like short range stuff. So I don't know. He does. He has a red line, so he can fire something. But he can fire all... Of, oh, I guess I am close enough. Okay. I misjudged that. 55, 55, 60, 60, and 80. All right, so I'm... One, two, three, four, five, six things with an average of about uh, 60. Let's say 60. Engaging target. Missiles are always going to be hit and miss, but I think that was actually more misses, more hits than miss, which is great. I'm so glad. I'm I, I should just record footage for this more often because then, then, then the game will grant me awesome RNG. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Miss. Good. This is gonna be the most. This is gonna seriously. This is gonna be the most lopsided match ever, just simply because I'm recording it. <laughs> and I bitched about the RNG being unfair. Look at that, a miss. They would have never missed if I was streaming. All right. Oh, uh, they've got some more. I'm just gonna wait for this. He's gonna move. He's gonna fire. There we go. Lots of incoming fire here. This guy is fine. Notice the red bar. Red bar is your heat. This uh, right here, there's like five hashes there. That's your uh, stability. If you lose too much stability by increasing that bar to yellow, yellow five hashes, then you will fall over. And if you fall over, then people will kick you while you're down. And it sucks. Because when they kick you while you're down, uh, they do extra damage, which is great. Uh, speaking of kicking while you're down, uh, look at this gentleman right here. Uh, he's actually within stomping range. But I, that would also put me uh, within <laughs> getting my hand handed to me range from several things. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Maybe let me see. Is there anybody else I can pick? No, but it's just the one guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There Ready you go. For Ready for orders. All right. So hit V. And then, uh, whoa, I'm not going to give him my back. Never mind. I said I was going to do it just simply because we're making a video and I want to show you guys what melee and tank looks like. But it's not going to happen because I'd be giving all these jerkies over here my back. And that's not going to happen. Let's see. Let's go ahead and actually... Move this guy over here so I LOS the um that gentleman there, and then I could turn this over here and hope hope the guy that this guy doesn't um creep up on my backside. Just like I get in the water, I could expel well this guy doesn't generate any heat for me, this stuff really, so never mind. So it was a good thought. Let's see. <laughs> we'll fire on both of our things. 85% for both of them. Good, both of them hit. Nice. Structure exposed, fantastic. 
One melee kick would have killed him, but then of course I would be out in the open. Of course, these guys got going on the back. The AI in this game is actually pretty impressive, I'm not gonna lie. Like seriously, the AI does not do a lot of dumb shit. On top of having RNG on its side, like for example, how this one shot just basically took out my left torso and my left arm. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's because my back was turned, right? That's what it was. All right, let's see. PPC medium laser. I can actually get, let me see. So right here, you see how there's like that, that arc that goes up? I can't show you at the mouse, but you can see there's an arc that goes up that go into the character on the the, uh, uh, the enemy mech on the left. Uh, the arc just basically means that only a missile will reach that long because my long range, miss long range missiles are on. I can actually go through and toggle that off, and then when I go to move, uh, it actually, oh, it does still show. It still shows. It's probably because it knows. It's like, hey, you can still use it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and move this guy over. Let's see. Can I move him here and then turn him around that way? Yes, I can. It's going to hurt if the other guy comes at me, but I feel like I need to do what I can to protect my dude there. So let's go ahead and get him moving. Now, just so there's no confusion, if you're watching this, you're like, well, why are we watching all these little cutscenes here? It doesn't matter if I have them all turned off or not. Like, it's still going to matter. If I just go and turn them off here, it's still going to, we're still going to sit there and watch the character. But why is there a pause? Why is escape, 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 escape? See? What does this pause even mean? Like, or why, why won't it let me access the, the, the menu from here? Like, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Like, I could, I have to attack base. I have to finish my turn in order, in order for me to do anything, access the menu, which is just, just fucking dumb. All right. Got it. Nice! Right arm destroyed. Well, I guess I can't bitch about my arms falling off. I just took that guy out in one shot. Well, one arm, anyways. My sensors show more bent. Okay. Voice acting is terrible in this game, by the way. Uh, let's see. Let's get this guy in range to also help help out his buddy. We'll do it like right here. Medium laser, AC2. Yeah, he should be able to do something. Get him over there. Oh, I forgot to. Oh, I could do it here. I could do it during an actual movement scene, but I can't do it once I stop. It's so stupid. All right, let's see. We're going to uh, turn that off, turn off the dynamic camera, the enemy cinematics, turn all this melee cinematic, jump cinematics, all these things are going to turn off. All of Half the time, the damn thing isn't looking at where it's supposed to anyway, especially for like jump cinematics. Is that sometimes it's looking at the ground uh, or looking in the air. It's just kind of ridiculous. It doesn't happen often, by the way, but it just it happens enough where it's just kind of like, really? I think I'll just turn off that awesome feature because it is awesome to have like this cinematic look at everything. Uh, let's see. Fire. It's basically firing all the stuff at him. Right torso destroyed. Pilot injured. This is good. I mean, if you didn't notice, this is good. All right. My turn again. Probably going to actually continue putting the pressure on that guy there. Uh, let's see. Let's... Mm, God, I keep this guy like almost everything. I'm just going to put it here. That way you get a wider, a broader range to turn. Can I get both those guys in the scope? No, I can't. Okay, cool. Whatever. Oh, we're, I guess we're still going to look at this, even though I said no. <laughs> Maybe it takes a while for that for that option to actually get baked in, for it to actually take. Maybe that's what it is. It's weird how ones and zeros work nowadays. All right, so one, let's go ahead and hit this guy. And let's go ahead and say everything. Uh, ooh, boy, if only I was in water. Let me see. Yeah, so units within the marsh can't yet, but I'm not in the marsh, right? No, I'm on the edge here. Uh, let's fire it all anyways. Target acquired. There it is. Central torso destroyed, which means that it is destroyed. Let's go. Completely. And I am now inspired. Good job. Good job. Boy, I'm just, I'm just gonna cook through this, actually. Wow. I'm saying that out loud, because I'm hoping the, the game hears me and starts stepping up its, stepping up its game. Look at that miss. Look at that miss, video game. Where you at? Where, where's, where's the game that I was playing <laughs> freaking several hours ago on, on stream? Give me a break. No, this is good, because I like to show you the end screen. I said it was gonna be a long one. Yeah, so actually, let's talk about it a little bit. So the, the matches are long. A lot of it is because there's a lot of fat to trim. If you disagree, you're wrong. <laughs> there's a lot of fat to trim in, in terms of like movement, uh, in uh, like weird, random and erratic pauses that occur sometimes. Um, knockdown. Okay, yeah, this guy's battle knockdown. Yep. All right, so this guy's basically done. Pilot injured. Minus one initiative. We can actually look down here. He took he took two two injury damage there. One more and he's dead. Thank God those all missed. <laughs> Cause that would have been it right, right there. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. They're not done with them just yet. So this is what I mean by the AI actually being pretty good. Like it's not gonna just go for the nearest enemy. It's gonna go for the one that it feels it could do the most possible damage to, and it's gonna do it however possible. Look at this. See, they're they're moving in position. There, there it is. I'm pretty sure he's dead. I'm pretty sure that in the last turn that he had all three of his health 
health things on his injury. Uh, he had three out of three. I could be wrong. Could be two out of three. But it feels like it had three out of three and it just got wiped. Uh, someone check check the tapes. All right. So let's see. These guys all have zero. See, like this guy's got, he's got, AKA's got zero out of three. But he could be gibbed in one turn. Super easy. So rip that mech. Uh, what do you got over here? Striker, tank. Let me see. Yes, Commander. AKA might be able to make the book it over there. No, no one's going to be able to book it over. That's too far. Let's get, let's get uh, him in the water. Actually, wait, is anybody else slow on stuff? Let's actually take somebody else and just see if we can go. Oh, I'd like to get some stomping going go. here. Let's see. This puts me right in the middle of everybody. Wow, these guys are just surrounding me. Maybe I should just get the F out. Can I turn around with this? Nope. And they will definitely target my ass if I come around there like that. That's a little better. Let's do this. Let's get the characters out of the way here. I mean, I, I, I do want to kind of try to win. I don't want to play like an idiot. We're still following, by the way, and all that stuff's turned off. I want to take a look. Is it? Let me see. Uh, target shoulder. Let's see. I guess I, I just have to do this. Targeting shoulder. Ah, okay. That's what I did wrong. Okay, so I guess let's go ahead and do this too, just in case. Leave it alone. All right. I figured that tar this whole bracket was actually part of the follow camera setup and it's disabling. That would have done it. Okay, good. Woo. All right. So now we shouldn't see any more movement, anything. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and move this guy also back here and where it seems to be relatively safe. <laughs> Not really. Just basically as far, uh, far away as we possibly can. Oh, man. Ooh, that's a lot of exposure if I don't do that. All right. No, no, no. Let's see. Three. Sorry. Yeah, I want to be able to give these guys. I don't want to give these guys my back. Okay, can I rotate it just a little bit? That seems kind of absurd. Like, I have all this range of movement here. Let me move the mouse. Let me move the camera here. There we go. No, no, no. No, I got to choose one or the other. It's because this is the back side of the, of the mech. Oh my god, whatever. This is choose something. Get him over there. Oh, there's more coming. Two more unknown vehicles. Oh, thank god. The little chevrons right there indicate your evasion. The farther you run, the more evasion I built up. That's how movement and invasion works in this game. So if you really want to build up a ton of evasion, you basically sprint your ass off as far as you can. You can see this is a little fort, like your right facing chevrons there. And down here, there's just two, right? So the more you build up, the better. The more dodge you have, effectively. So we have more guys coming from that direction over there. Decker uh, can do some stomping if he wants. Let's go ahead and get this guy over here. Basically pulling back. And we'll see if we can't, maybe this is be three guys here. We can go stomp, 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 and then work our way around, stomp, stomp, and then take care of this mech. I hope. Good. All right, so now we gotta wait for all these guys to take their turns. Morning. Detecting mech warrior uh oh, injuries. uh oh, is he gonna is he gonna be dead before I get to go again? He is out in the open, but he is Morning. facing them though. It's not the backside. Someone on Twitter actually said that uh, they had a brand new mech that basically got gibbed because of a lucky crit on the chest. He's going to fall down here in a second. This guy's moving in. Structure exposed. Ooh, he still hasn't moved. Still hasn't fallen over. Good. Ooh, man, that's rough. All right, let's get him the fuck out. Let's see. Oh, I can't sprint because I lost a leg, so that's gonna be uh it's gonna be interesting. I don't really have a place to go for cover necessarily. And I can't go out here and turn around. If I click here, I can't turn around all the way, so I'm gonna leave myself exposed no matter what. So basically this guy's dead. <laughs> if I'm being totally honest, this guy's basically basically dead. He could jump, but that would generate a lot of heat and really not get me that far. But if I jump, I can actually turn around and face a better direction if I want to. But is there a better direction though when I'm basically surrounded? I don't know. Yeah. Let me see if I can get let's see if I can do it like this and just worry about that mech and that's it. So here we go. He's gonna jump in the air to begin a cinematic camera. That's pretty much how the actual cinematic camera works. <laughs> all right so that i'll have him basically hunkered down we'll go ahead and click this vigilance which will reduce the amount of stability uh i just i guess uh, instability that i've generated go ahead and yes ca it'll cost me 25 morale which is fine boom but now i won't fall over right away so we'll go to brace now reduce the amount of damage coming in so this is the probably the best thing i could have done for this guy given the position he was in prior uh -huh. now let's go ahead and take uh Waiting the behemoth no let's take uh decker can Decker get over there? I kind of want him to come to me. 
This actually gives me a pretty good position here. Flying will also give me a good position as well. And allow me to turn around and face better because if I do the, if I go regular move, I won't be able to. It'll generate a little bit of heat, but that's totally fine. There you go, right like that. I'll probably do. Seems kind of silly to do it that way, but trust me, that's the way you should probably do it. All right, let's see. Decker still has the ability to attack, though. We'll probably attack this guy. So we fire. Whoops. That was my fault. I guess that was the only weapon I could have fired at it. Did I do anything? Oh, hey, right arm destroyed. <laughs> wow. Game's just giving me shit now. Good miss, man. Okay, those of you guys who watch the stream, streams plural, please leave a comment below and tell tell everybody else who didn't watch the stream that I am getting off easy so far. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can I, I just, he doesn't have a line of sight on this guy. No, he doesn't. Okay. Um, let's see. Actually, I do want some of the cinematics on, if you guys don't mind, because I actually kind of like the aim down. Targeting shoulder sprint follow cam. See, it's normal follow cam. I like the targeting shoulder cam. I really, really do. It just kind of gives me an indicator that I am actually going to, uh, hold on, setting. Uh, tar attack zoom. Good. And then use dynamic attack camera. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that one. And everything, everything else can just suck it. I don't need it. All right, let's see. Receiving you. Back to this receiving me. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a jump again. Again, might generate some heat, but it's not that big of a deal as long as I can get a good angle on all of these dudes. Firing jump jet. See, she has got like four jump jets on her, so she could jump, go much farther than uh, Decker, right? Is that the case? I'm, I'm just kind of guessing there, but I'm pretty sure it's the case. Let's see. Uh, you know what? It's not going to tell me exactly where everything's at, so... Yeah, never mind. We'll just pretend that's the case. It doesn't tell me unless I hover over each individual piece. I'm not going to do that right now because time to put my other guy. No, oh, never mind. It's enemy turn. Oh, boy. Good. Wow. I love this game. <laughs> now, here's what I'll say. I'll, I'll, I'll probably reiterate this at the end. I will definitely reiterate this at the end. But you should know that this game is hard. Like, it really is hard. Mario Rabbids is pretty much like the entry into this genre, right? Into the turn-based strategy, tabletop, whatever. <laughs> into the, in, in terms of like turn-based stuff, like, yeah, like Mario Rabbids is your, uh, is your, your gateway drug into this genre. But, uh, Battletech is definitely the hardest. And I've actually got confirmation from other people who play a lot of this particular genre. Uh, but you may disagree, that's fine. Uh, let's see. I could shoot these guys, but god damn it, it's like it's just a waste of freaking ammo. When I could just get over far away something. Actually, this might be a good idea to do this. Just kind of get bunched up here. And then see if we can't hammer one of these guys and then move. Basically move strategically to each location here. I'll have him attack you. Really? 75%? Sure. Let's give it a shot. Engaging right through, right through the thing there. Awesome. Wow. Set your torso display. What the? What is this game I'm playing? Enemy mech destroyed. This is, is this Battletech? Hold on a second. Wait, hold on. Hold on. No, this is, this is, this is, hold on. Am I playing Battletech? This is, they died 10 hours. Battletech. Yep. Battletech. That's what it says. Running. Okay. Well, damn. That's weird. All right. Let's ready see. For uh, ready for orders here. Uh, I can't necessarily run over there and do any damage to him, which sucks. I leave myself wide out in the open, but there's only, uh, there's no more mechs left. That was actually the last mech. There's lots of small vehicles, so this is actually going to be very, very difficult because those little guys can, can mess you up. Uh, so how about we do this? We'll do a couple of moves and then some attacks and then some more moves and some attacks. <laughs> Super basic, awesome strategy. Uh, let's see. So we'll target this. Uh, we'll fire with PPC medium laser. We'll do basically everything because I'm standing in the in the water. So any kind of heat dissipation is already Target handled. Confirmed. Even though it doesn't generate any heat, what I'm doing here. Bam! Done. It's go time. Get it. It's go time. Vehicle destroyed. Yeah. Pause. There we go. See, like every there's there's just like an, an excess of pauses. Like tiny, tiny slow. They could tighten it up just a little bit. Apparently, XCOM had the same issue actually, where there's like little I'll pauses here and there in between be. either a voice or whatever that is just a bit excessive. Let me see. So I got that one guy down, which is great because now I can let's see. He's got some pretty good range of some of this stuff. How do we move him over here? Start moving around this thing. And then we start hammering down like this guy here. So target this guy with everything. Sure. Why not? 
There's like zero loss to this. I can actually go precision if I wanted to, but I'm gonna save that morale. Roger. This is not overkill. At all. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Thank you. Get back. I think what it is is like every time you do something, the the pilot has to tell you what happened. Like, I mean, I yeah, I, I saw that it was destroyed. <laughs> it has to tell me. So there's like a small voice thing that plays, and there's like a there's like a half second to one second pause on both ends of that voice file, um, and you're waste basically waiting for that to to finish before you could do anything. Damage minimal. Minimal. We're good. We're good. My turn. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. We'll move her over here and then turn her just so she get a clear shot on that over there. She takes some pot shots over there. I copy. And then we'll basically get her over here. I really want you to see me stomp this guy's face in here. Fire, PPC, uh, basically everything I can. Firing. You know, the water actually makes this very easy because there's just no heat management. Like, in most cases, you're going to have uh, instances Recording. where you're going to have to manage your heat, like bail on a mission or whatever. Um, or bail, bail, on, bail on, uh, on an attack, essentially. An encounter and run away. Yes, yes, come to me. Come to me. Actually, before we do anything, let's make sure that the the melee cinematics are always on. Jump cinematics always on. There we go. All right. Let's see. We can get this guy should go on go moving out to encounter some of these other dudes here. We'll make give him a good sprint. And my blackjack. We have three enemies left. One, two, three. Here comes the tanks. I mean, I'll tell you right now. Bar barring internal damage. Thank you. Uh, it says that in the lower left corner. Uh, barring some kind of crazy event or some kind of crazy super bad RNG, uh, this is a win for me. I can already see this is this is definitely a win for me. Uh, what is this? Let's see. Uh, units with the march gain fifty percent stability damage reduction from all attack. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Different from the water. So I'll just go ahead and give her my back and then take out this guy from a distance. And then, aka, we're going to take out this guy and then we'll be done. Let's see. Let's go precision because that's always fun. This guy. Yeah. How about you fire right? How about his front side? No, nah, right in the middle. Everything? Yes. I copy. Vehicle destroyed and destroyed and destroyed. Done. Reporting. Enemy vehicle eliminated. Yeah. <laughs> really? This has got to be the easiest goddamn mission I've ever played on any game. <laughs> oh, Decker's taking some hurt. He's good, though. I'm taking internal damage. He's good. He's good. Receiving you. Oh, death from above. Oh, this is even better than melee. Here it is. All right, death from above. Uh, This is basically an airborne attack. That's exactly what it says. What it sounds like. Here we go. And done. However, it does do damage to your legs or to other things sometimes, I guess. But so don't do it. And also adds instability. So don't do it when your character is ready to fall over or when his legs are already busted or like wounded, I should say. Don't do that. Uh, let's go ahead and actually move this guy over here so he's in his face. We're not gonna attack. This in his face, because I want I want you to see this regular basic melee attack on the last character of this. This is this is the perfect mission for this any for breakfast. You got to see a little bit of everything. You saw a character just basically get gibbed. Uh, you got to see Max, yeah, enemy Max, albeit it was just like what the two I think. Uh, and you get to see uh, uh, basically every other move and ability that you have. Death from above. Uh, you're gonna see melee here yeah, in a second. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah melee. Da, 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 da. How about you just like stay there? Taking a protective stance. All right, let's see what this guy does. He's going to move away. He can't go too far, though. Oh, boy, that's painful. That's painful. I feel like I'm playing me from earlier. <laughs> Just the luck he's having. This is terrible. All right, AKA, this is my character, actually, the character I made. Uh, let's go ahead and go in for the kill with V, and then attack, and he basically just walks on over. Just like this. And stomp. Up a new sensor trace. Oh, Looks like enemy, reinforcements. enemy reinforcements. There's even more. Good job, commander. The people. Wait, what? Mission successful. 
All right. D he did just say the enemy. Re whatever. <laughs> that was weird. All right, continue. I'm so glad, actually. I'm so glad I got to win a match one uh, on the first time go because you could play these matches for up to like 45 minutes to an hour and a half because some of these missions are really, really long and you will get, uh, and if you lose, then you have to go back to your last save or whatever, but still it just, oh, it's so painful. All right, um, let's see. No, 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 I got payout of 414,000. Uh, I destroyed everything, great, go to next. Uh, you have uh, some of the damage that was done. You can see I lost my two lasers for the uh, Citra Torso on the spider. The spider has also been destroyed, killed in action. I lost Medusa. So I lost uh, a member of my team, which sucks, but I have money now. I guess I could turn around and go and spend it on getting another person in. Uh, and you can see the kill count down here, uh, as well as the damage needs to be done. So I need to actually get all these, the, the arm, the leg repaired, the leg here repaired, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So the hash marks basically mean these things need work, but my Vindicator is uh, pretty much spotless, actually. Nice. All right, so salvage assigned. So I already assigned the salvage because I didn't have an opportunity to go through and actually pick through and pick the pieces I wanted because that was not part of my nego negotiated contract. So instead, I got two machine guns, which are melee, basically. You you go up there, you 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 uh you just slap them, and then it fires, uh it fires a few rounds from the machine gun, and it basically becomes part of your melee attack, which is kind of nice. You can have a nice beefy. Uh, mech that basically just walks around just slapping everything together, you know, and, and then peppering them with machine gun and just basically just taking a beating. A brawler. Confirm. Dead. All right. So, now we take a look at things, right? Now we can go through it and get another mission if we wanted to. Uh, we could go to the barracks and get another, uh, well, the mech warrior is dead. He's dead. So we have to go to the hiring hall. We have to go through and find a replacer for that guy. Let's see. Repo. Where do They're all pretty cheap, actually. So it's not that big. It's really not that big of a deal uh, if somebody dies. Uh, outside of the experience you lose or, or you know, whatever you can see right here, uh, there's the MRB. My MRB rating is too low. Mech Warrior can't be hired because your company's Mercenary Review Board rating is too low. If you notice in the last screen when we finished that mission, there was on the upper right corner, there was the MRB stat uh, and it showed my progress in that. It's essentially just reputation. That's all it is. Uh, Whisper. Why does Whisper have this little thing on? Is that the house she represents? Kickstarter backer. Oh, she's a Kickstarter backer. That's kind of cool. Uh, I see a support of Battletech. Awesome. Cool. Whitney was born in a Turing family. Da 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 da. Well, yeah, sure, we'll hire her. Base monthly salary, 18000 Yep. New mech warriors available. Awesome. And then you go through the barracks. You could go and sign her points if she has any experience uh, on her when she first starts. Which I don't think they do, but they might. Yeah, zero experience. So I thought. Uh, but Decker's got uh, a little bit that he could spend. Good behemoth, job. who was a behemoth in the last match, has a little bit that she could spend as well. I think. Uh, I actually could go to the next step here. Increase that to see plus one max evasion. That's awesome. Some of these have actually those are pretty good stats. <laughs> the evasion stat is so good. Uh let's see. Mech bay bays. Go to the bay here. You can see this is a lot of repairs to be done. And I already have some stuff in uh in, in progress here. Uh I still have somebody in it that is out of action. AKA is out of action. He just I mean he just got out of action. So I can't do anything for at least 26 days unless I hire enough people to basically fill his slots. <laughs> Um, let's see. Go to, uh, repair. We're gonna repair. Do you want to repair the mech? Yeah, yeah, repair the mech. Good. That's gonna take forever. Uh, let's see. Repair. These are just, this is because this is the ones that lost, like, uh, had some damage on the legs or the arms or whatever. Just basic repair. You have to actually open it up for that. But for this one, refit. Why? Because not only did I lose a healthy chunk of basically everything, I also lost a good handful of weapons as well. So they do recommend a refit. Look, there's no weapons on it. If there was a weapon on it, you can't, you can't save it. I'll say this. You can't save it unless there is a weapon on it. That's why you have to go into the refit. You can't just click repair because it won't be suitable for battle without being uh, refit with whatever. Uh, we can actually go through and sort these a little bit so we can see a medium laser. We drop the medium laser on there and just one medium laser is all it takes to go ahead and go confirm and it'll tell you everything you need and then you can go and confirm that. I'm going to cancel because I do want to have some more stuff than just that, but it doesn't look like I really have a whole lot on it. What is this guy? Spider. Oh, it's a spider. It's a light mech. Yes, that makes sense. So we're going to drop. Uh, I guess to put that there. Really? Dang. All right. Well, everything's going to be on the center there. We could take the laser and move somewhere else. Nope. So he has no mount points on anything. Boy, that sucks. Jump jets all on one side. Man, I wish I would have seen this. That's just asking for it. Really blow up one thing. Left, tor right torso. And then that would just kill my ability to, to jump. Uh, I know heat sink. Let's go and grab a heat sink here. And that's going to take up the last of my... Let's put the heat sink over here. Uh, heat sink on the head. Let's put it over here on the arm. I guess the head would be a good idea because, uh... If the head is gone, then you're dead. So I guess you don't necessarily need a heat sink if you uh, if you're dead. All right, so jump jets, all that good stuff. Actually, wow, how many can I stack on this and just throw like so many? Look at that. That's a ton, and it's light too. This thing could probably fly for days. 
I wonder if anyone's ever done that, actually, to see just how far you can fly. Uh, it does have, let's talk about basic stuff here. You do have a skirmish mode you can go through and practice. It's just, it's incredibly hard, so it's a good way to actually get Actually, what I found is I learned a lot more from the skirmish mode uh, than I did the tutorial. The tutorial is a good start. It's very, very long, mind you. Uh, uh, but once you get through, you got a pretty good start. You could back out to the main screen and then do a, a uh, go and handle a skirmish just to get a better idea of working with like various mechs and all that stuff. Um, and in the skirmish screen, which I'll actually go and show you right now, let's go and see. We got stuff good. Confirm. Yeah, we'll confirm for several days. I'll be honest, this might be the last time I ever play this game, simply because it's not a game for me. I recognize it's not a game for me, and I made this video specifically because I want to make sure that if any of you guys are out there thinking, wow, you know, I kind of like mechs, like Mech Warrior, and you want to get into this thing, you have to know that the game is not forgiving. What you saw in that match was not was not representative of everything that I everything that I've experienced so far in the game. Uh, that was actually super easy. That was cake. That was a cakewalk of a mission. I was way out geared for those guys. Um, you should know that the game will challenge you. It will absolutely challenge you. There, there are some instances where you actually won't get contracts that are easy. Everything you have is going to be a pain in the ass. In this case, look at that. Actually, I have one that's pretty good too. I could do that one too if I wanted to. Maybe I'll just do a whole bunch of cheap ones and just work my way up to, to until I get plenty of you know items together or whatever. Uh, it doesn't necessarily pay that great. Three hundred ninety-four thousand, the max pay. That's basically one month of pay. And I remember, I've already damaged enough things to actually take me about a month to, to a month and a half in order to recover. If I had more mechs, I could swap them out. But remember, also, I only have a certain amount of bays available to me. Show me the thing there over here. See? So, all of my things are out, are out of commission. I only have two mechs that are available. Uh, and it looks like the minimum to have a full lance, which is a squad, right? A four. Uh, and the minimum to get a full lance is going to be 45 days. Right? 43 days, sorry. Uh, in order to get one, unless I go to the store and buy one, right? Which I can, yeah, you could buy parts, I think. Uh, but even then, even then, I, I would have to get rid of something. I go to storage and see what I have, so I have parts. So yeah, I could go and make another one, but I, I, I can't upgrade the ship yet. So this is something that I think maybe comes later on in the game. You can upgrade your ship to have more bays. So this is the part that sucks. And this is where RNG can get you, even though that was an easy match. I still really can't do much of anything. Uh, unless I wait, well, I mean, I can't risk doing much of anything, um, until after I get at least two more, uh, two more of my mechs back in service. And that sucks because in those 45 days, the financial report is going to hit at least once. Actually, let's go ahead and walk through it here. I'll just show you. Financial report's going to go, timeline advancing, you're going to see 19, 18, all the way down. Oh, man. We're at Detroit, we're in Detroit right now, by the way very clean comparatively speaking in the game uh nine days eight days seven days gonna count all the way down now there are also certain things i'm hoping this actually pops up while we're doing this uh it's kind of like ftl style as you move from point to point sometimes you'll encounter certain random events here we go so it cost me 249,000 for operating expenses now this pardon me this next screen is super important this is where you guys should go through and you can say you know what? we're gonna run super slim right everyone's pay is gonna get cut the morale is gonna suck uh but you could do this if you wanted to uh, or it says bankruptcy, bank, bankruptcy projected, uh, or you can leave it, uh, you know, higher if you want. So let's leave it on normal, right? And then we'll go ahead and run it in, okay. In, in an actual event where if I was actually going to be, uh, playing the game, I would probably run it on a, yes, this guy's going to tell, this guy's seriously going to tell me that I'm broke like every day. Um, it's highly annoying and he pauses the damn timeline here, which is fine. I get that. You don't want, they don't want you to basically run out of money because you forgot to hit pause. Uh, but actually, no, we're actually at a point where you can see it. Here we go. So 15, 16, 16 days and 24 days till the next financial report, which is going to bring me down to basically no money. So I essentially spent $500,000 or 500,000 credits, uh, just waiting for things to get fixed, which already cost me money. I could have slimmed up to 147,000, therefore only uh, only giving me a, what was it, uh, a $400,000 deficit, or 400,000 credit deficit uh, over the course of these two months while I'm waiting for these, uh, for my uh, mechs to, to be ready for, for battle, but I can't, <laughs> I mean, but I, I, well, sorry, but, but, but either way, it sucks. Uh, I'm losing money just sitting here waiting for the next thing to come down. So you have to make the decision. Do I, you know what? Maybe my mech is so trash. I can't wait for it to get fixed. I'm just gonna garbage it and scrap it, strip everything off of it, and then I'm just gonna buy a new one. That might be the option for you because waiting costs money. Time is money, right? 
friends. All right, so we go to contracts here. Sorry, what was I gonna look at here? Uh, let's see, let's go to the store. Actually, just see how much some of these things cost, just out of curiosity. Let's go to mechs. Let's see, 209,000, 396,000, 341,000. Yeah, so you know what? They're pretty expensive too. <laughs> They're pretty damn expensive too. Um, so yeah, yeah, so going to the contract, that's what I was gonna show you. This is, this is the potential like next thing that could screw you here, right? Uh, so the next, every mission that I have available to every contract I have available to me is a remote contract. It's a contract that's not on Detroit, Detroit planet or whatever. Um, so it says right here, this contract requires travel to this destination. I've already cooked a bunch of time doing nothing. So that's my fault. Uh, so keep in mind <laughs> that you are going to have travel time to whatever the destination is, right? So let's go ahead and negotiate. This is a, yeah, well, money, right? Rep bonus. Oh, cool. Well, actually, I get rep bonus. So I take no money. Yeah, yeah, but whatever. I need the money, right? So this is thankfully gonna bring me in just in the same amount of time as I get my two, I uh, my two mechs back in service. So technically, that would still put me at a four hundred thousand credit deficit if I were to slim up the pay to all of the mech warriors and all of everything else. Uh, at the last uh, PNL monthly report. Yes, yeah, I'm telling you, this guy's gonna tell you like every possible opportunity you can. Hey, boss! Hey, boss! Hey, boss! Hey, did you hear about the pay? You, you, we, we, we're running out of money. Uh, let's see. So I have six days left. Let's go ahead and hit go. So that gives me a week buffer before the next financial report. A week buffer for the next financial report. That's gonna bring me down to basically what a hundred and something thousand uh, credits. So yeah, you have to really, really, really be tight with your money. Do you? You have to be. Uh, frugal. You have you have to basically look for the deals, look get more money. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have gear and all that stuff, and and get and go and have like your 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 pick of the litter for mechs and and all that stuff. But you definitely don't want to. Uh, let's see, we arrived. Let's see, not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, see, here we go. Yeah, we have seven days, so we arrived a week short. We now have uh, all of our mechs in the bay. We have four hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. Uh, we have four mechs. It's not the ideal mechs that I would want to go with, right? Uh, we have a couple mediums, and then we have a, uh, one heavy, right? Yeah, so 45, 45, and a 60, and a 20. So what is in this mission? Let's go take a look here real quick. What is the mission that I am on? Connecting. Uh, oh, these are all uh, not the missions I was on. Hold on a second, then. Probably in here. The Leopard. Contract. Abandon. So where does it show where my, where my mission is? I guess I'll go to launch contract and that'll tell me in there. Uh, view details. Here it is. Let's see. It's a one, it's a one skull. So we could probably go through. It's, just, it's basically capture base. So who knows what they're going to throw at us. But here's what I'll say. If it's a capture base, a super light mech, when you're playing king of the hill, it might not be the best idea. <laughs> but because of time constraints and money constraints, I have to go with it. So... You have to manage your money. This is the part that I don't like about the game. It's it, this is this this whole like admin part. Like it takes away from the action of the flow of the game. Uh, I like it as a feature. I think it's great. It's all cool. You can manage all this stuff, whatever, right? But it really breaks up the flow of game of the game of having to do all this stuff. It makes it slow. And I'll tell you this. My 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 opinion on this is heavily influenced by the fact that that I'm streaming it, and so it doesn't make for entertaining uh, an entertaining stream when you have to spend so much time uh, in the middle, which therefore could be assumed that some of you guys might just find that part boring to even play, let alone watch somebody else watch it. So just keep that in mind. It's you get like about 45 minutes of action followed by about 10 to 20 minutes of admin stuff for every mission you do. And it's so deep. There's so much stuff you could do. All the different assignments of every mech. It's so awesome. You could do all this stuff. It's freaking great. I love it. I love that part of the game. I really do. I just feel like there's a lot of fat to trim here. I feel like there's a lot of fat to trim where they could kind of clean things up and make it so that when you actually get into the mission, that doesn't necessarily feel like the, the deck is stacked against you. So that's it. Uh, like I said, Mario Rabbids is kind of your entry level into your entry level game in terms of the uh, th this genre. And then uh, Battletech is definitely probably one of the more difficult ones. It's not something you're going to pick up and say, like, you know, what? I've never played anything that was turn based. I'm just going to go and jump in here and give it a shot. You know, you're going to be very, very disappointed and very turned off because it takes you hours 
hours before you start to get things to click. Certain things have clicked for me while making this video and you saw them 10 hours in with the help of chat. Okay. And, and, and I'm not completely dumb. <laughs> I played enough games to get the most, most mechanics, but I'm just telling you, be warned. It is a very pricey game. Uh, well, I'm sorry. It's not a pricey game. Uh, it's a pricey game for what we typically cover on Indie for Breakfast. It's $39.99. Uh, but it is still, um, $40 that you're going to be throwing at a, at a title. Which is, I mean, for what you get, it's totally worth it, honestly. Alright, so that's it. This is Battletech. Uh, like I said, you know, everything I said, everything I've, I've done, I, I've shown you is just a small sample of what, uh, of how like the battles go and everything. I wish the battle was a little bit more intense so you could see more of the stuff, but I'm, I appreciate the fact that we won because it allowed me to show you guys more stuff. Uh, so that's great. But yes, Battletech, my name is Mike B.A.K. Filoni. This is Indie for Breakfast. Thank you again for watching and uh, feel free to leave some comments below if you don't think you agree. If you don't, if you don't agree with what I said or if, or maybe I point out something that you feel is incorrect, please feel free to do so below and I will see you guys later. Bye.